All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 20th day of June, Monday, in the year of our Lord, 2022. And today I want to uh, talk about a uh, present threat in America with historic precedent. That's a danger, uh, an unseen danger, largely. The Nazification of America. That might seem rather strange, but I remember when uh, President Putin uh, enunciated his goals in Ukraine, the, the demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine. That seemed odd. What do you mean de ne uh, denazification? Were the Nazi Nazis running Ukraine? Yeah. He didn't mean literal German Nazis. He was meant... People who hold to a Nazi ideology, a Nazi ideology of racial purity and racial superiority and racial cleansing and uh, cultural um, hegemony, uh, cultural cleansing to uh, and victimization, you're, that you're a victim. And a clear example of this is, if you know any history, if you know a history of the Weimar Republic, if you have any kind of wisdom from God at all, you can see the parallels. Germany, uh, the Weimar Republic, was basically imposed uh, by the Allies after World War I, along with massive sanctions, financial uh, debts, and they destroyed the economy of Germany. Uh, during Germany, near the end of the First World War, the, the uh, German population was already starving to death. And then all of a sudden, they find themselves uh, surrendering. Adolf Hitler, I believe, was in hospital at the time, recovering from, from poison gas attacks. He was a legitimate hero in World War I, uh, legitimate holder of the Iron Cross, he uh, performed messenger duty in the frontline trenches, scrambling back and forth, uh, communicating messages, which was a very dangerous job. And uh, it's you know, and that the uh, that affected him seriously. The the uh, surrender, the capitulation of Germany. And it led to the belief, not just among Hitler, but common, that Germany had been stabbed in the back. Germany was the victim of sinister forces from within. Well, there's always sinister forces within. <laughs> but out of that, and the way the alliance treated Germany was directly connected with the causes of World War II, the, the grievances and the suffering, the oppression of the German people. The, the, they they uh, had victim status and grievances and uh, racial identity. And Hitler didn't create that. He just personified it. He per, per, he was able to uh, to personify the German people or the Austro-German people. He was not even a German, he was an Austrian. But the the he felt that he carried it with him from the First World War and his uh and then prior to the war he had been a failure. He was uh 
was artistically inclined. The, of course, the Western propaganda made him out to be a wallpaper guy, a paper hanger, when in fact he was uh, reasonably skilled at landscapes and architectural uh, watercolors and drawings. He didn't do well with people, though. Uh, as, as far as uh, he could not do a portrait, but he could do buildings and landscapes. and I, I was sort of like that when I was young, too. I had no problem with doing landscapes with people. Nah, stick figures. <laughs> Just couldn't quite get the hang of that. Uh, not that art was a huge thing. But uh, anyway, uh, he found himself as a personification of the German people, and probably demon-possessed, too. It's like a spirit would take over him. If you've ever listened to any of Hitler's speeches, he sort of winds up into it, and then all of a sudden they become, even if you can't speak German, which I can't, but you can sense the power of his rhetoric, his ability to communicate with the German people. Uh, some of the people were comparing Trump to Hitler because Trump has that ability to, to uh, have an empathy with the American people, or some of the American people. And that's what makes a good demagogue. <laughs> I'm not saying that Trump was necessarily demagogue, but it's that ability to, to identify with people and their problems even if you yourself did not experience them, but Hitler had experienced the suffering of the First World War in the trenches. And the civilians suffered greatly, too, because the Allies blockaded Germany. They were, gonna, they were trying to starve Germany to death. And you wonder why Hitler tried to starve Britain. Well, payback. As you sow, so shall you reap. Now this, I'm not justifying Hitler. I'm just saying he was a human being. People that think Hitler was some sort of, or the Nazis were some sort of uh, abnormal monstrosity are foolish. Sinful human beings are capable of great evil given the power to do it, given the circumstances. You know, unlike Biden, who has no empathy with the American people and others, see, Biden and Obama, Obama, he, as long as he had a teleprompter, Obama could have been a, a preacher, yet he preached, uh, doing stump speeches where he wasn't using a teleprompter in campaign. That, he, there was a reason there were very long lines to hear him speak when he was campaigning for the election. Um, but he was a community organizer, or, you know, rabble-rouser, as I've said before, with that in Southside Chicago. The problem is, Ob well, Obama, you have to lay some of the blame for what's going on to Obama, but it, it, it's the roots of it go back, and we have scattered examples throughout history in America. Uh, Obama bought, had this uh, coalition-building strategy of identity politics. Not that others haven't done it, but Obama took it to new heights or new lows, depending on your point of view, uh, where you break America up into groups and then promise each group things and then get them to buy into voting for you based on your promises to that group. Now, obviously, this is a failed strategy <clears throat> because those groups have different ambitions and different desires and different needs. And when it comes time to deliver, well, you just have to forget that all. <coughs> promises, you can promise anybody anything, but can you deliver it? See, the problem is you're not seeking to be the president of the United States. You're seeking to be the president of these individual identity groups. Groupthink. This is communism, too. The, the idea of the class, the, the uh, bourgeoisie, the, the property owners, the uh, the factory owners and the proletariat, the workers. You got to divide people into classes or categories, into identity groups, into races. 
Hitler invented this, invented himself as a savior of the German people in an ideology to fit that. He was strongly influenced by the occult. And uh, he had, that was part of the, uh, the Nazi Hitler apparatus, too. New Age occultism. Uh, the Ascended Masters. and See, it was anti-Christianity. What he tried to do to the Christian church, he created the German Christian church, which was, uh, or tried to create it, which was not, did not worship the Christ of the Bible. You know, it was an Aryan Christ. and existed to serve the state. But he, he had to create an identity, a racial identity for the people. And then a, they, then a, explain to them their victimhood status and how they were persecuted. Uh, they were really the superior race, but these minorities had ganged up on them and persecuted them, and they were stabbed in the back by their own leadership. And Does that sound familiar at all? to the American experience, to the, uh, the race wars that are currently raging in America, in the universities, in the schools, recently in the streets, before the Biden, the Biden was elected, the Biden regime. You know, suddenly it's like somebody threw a switch. You'd almost think that these were being orchestrated well, maybe they were, but was it spiritual or other? Now, the Nazification of America. I want to point out that the very ideology of Adolf Hitler is identical with the ideology that dominates the woke movement today. You need to be able to see this. You need to be able to separate skin color from this. Skin color only c comes in because that's a convenient way to put people in categories. Even though, though where do you draw the line, you know? Was Obama black or white? White mother, or black father. African father. As opposed to most black Americans. See, black and white are colors. They're not racial groups. They're not regional groups. Elon Musk is a African American, as somebody pointed out the other day. From South Africa. There was a pro non country with problems, too. Racial problems. Just like America's history. South Africa's history is really close. Uh, the, the white supremacists and the, uh, the, the, the black uh, population and the apartheid. One must wonder that, as Hitler did, they, whether or not they took their inspiration from America and its treatment of the Native Americans, the reservations, confining them onto reservations. Although they weren't strictly confined because, you know, if, if there was uh, basically if they wanted to keep their tribal identity, uh, Native Americans are free to leave the, revelation, or, uh, the, the reservations, they're American citizens, they can settle anywhere, they can vote, you know. But in order to have any autonomy and to maintain their identity, uh, they have to, you know, the reservations is, well, that's, that, talk about apartheid, this is, this is very close, and also what's being done in Israel. Israel will not accept the Palestinians as equals, for several reasons. One is religious. Israel, uh, the, 
Talmudic, I want to be careful how I say this, because this is not a racial issue or an anti-Jewish issue. It's a religious issue, uh, and it affects others, too. And it affects people who misuse Christianity, too. Talmudic Judaism which was created by the rabbis after, largely created by the rabbis, after the destruction of the temple and uh, the exile of the Jewish people, which was basically carried out completely and was at uh, 134 with the second Jewish rebellion. The Romans just had it, said, no, we're just going to drive them out. Completely. Now, there, there is a hostility in the Talmud. And if somebody's out there and they're Jewish and they're knowledgeable, uh, Orthodox Jew, and you find me mischaracterizing it, please inform me. I do have access to the Talmud uh, uh, in my computer. Uh, I'm not an expert on it. I've read parts of it. And I visited Israel, had a rather heated discussion with... Uh, a rabbi, uh, an American rabbi ex who was ex-Pentecostal, <laughs> uh, who was lecturing the the Gentiles in a in a, a hostel, uh, you know, a cheap youth motel for for vagabonds and uh, tourists. <laughs> I actually was met at the bus, and somebody said, "Do you need a place to stay?" Anyway, it was cheap. It was like fifteen dollars or something like that, or or it was very cheap, five dollars a night or something. I don't know. Uh, and anyway, there there is this, and it came out. And I don't have any hatred about this, but I recognize the causes and the biblical. So Christians, we can look at this and look at how people act and understand this is part of sinful human nature and Christ came to save sinners. So we can look at, you know, prostitutes and everything else with some compassion and understand God sent his son to die for them too, as long as you're not a Calvinist, a consistent Calvinist. Oh, my Limited atonement doesn't work. It doesn't come from the Bible. It's not derived from that. It's derived from man's reasoning. Particularly, where? I don't have his book handy. No, it was John Owens. Uh, yeah, John Owens and the death of death and the death of Christ. It's a polemic for limited atonement. Uh, and the theories of the atonement are like the economic theory. Uh, Christ had to suffer so much for X, X amount of suffering for X amount of sin. That's not biblical. He died for sin, period, to satisfy the law. Not the wrath of God, the law. If God was filled with wrath, he wouldn't have filled, sent his son into the world to save sinners. As Paul said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He doesn't say while we, we were yet the elect. He said Christ died for the sins of the whole world. Very clearly stated in the New Testament. And Calvinists want to limit that which makes it possible for you to do some atrocious things because you just say, well, they're not the elect. So God wants them dead anyway. And there's an attitude in rabbinic Judaism, in the Talmud, at least in places. Can't, it's, it's a very large collection of rabbi, uh, rabbi, uh, rabbinical writings, so I, I'm not categorizing the whole thing this way. I'm not knowledgeable. I haven't read the whole thing, <laughs> and I don't intend to. It's rather, uh, a, a, rather a large volume of material. Sort of like writing the reading the Church Fathers. You know, it's like really, don't subject yourself to that. Uh, 
But there's this attitude in places, and I've seen this among uh, some Jews. Personally experienced it as a young child, too, and, and I'd forgotten about it, and I think God brought that to my memory. Where uh, uh, I had I knew nothing about these things, but I had a friend that was Jewish. That was just like when I was a kindergarten or first grade, and he invited me over to his house, and and I can remember his parents having a conversation in the background one time. I think I was standing outside the front door, and they were saying, "Oh, he's a nice kid, but he's not Jewish." And basically, he, my friend was forbidden to, to uh, continue having me as his friend because I wasn't Jewish. I, I can understand that, especially now. I can understand that. As a parent, you, you don't necessarily want uh, bad influences. And I, being a Lutheran, would be a bad influence. I mean, a Gentile, a Christian, the the Talmud, the uh, Judaism is hostile toward Christianity, hostile toward Christ. Uh, it's somewhat concealed in the Talmud under language designed to conceal it, but it's quite evident what it is, that, that Jesus is re regarded as a great apostate, an enemy of Judaism. We find it in the New Testament, Paul was a persecutor of Christians because he believed they were a threat to Israel and the true worship of Yahweh. As Christians, we should be able to understand all these things and, and recognize what they are and just realize this is sinful humanity. But uh, in Israel... The Palestinians, the attitude toward the Palestinians, and I'm, you know, this is sort of a small sample from my own experience. But I think it's consistently with the news that, that if somebody thinks that Israel doesn't treat the Palestinians well, you're not off base. They don't treat the Palestinians as equal. Even if they happen to be Israeli citizens, they're not treated as equals. And it has to do with Judaism. It has to do with the attitude in Judaism toward Gentiles, period. And some of it is highly negative. And usually there's a cause and effect, and some of the pogroms against the Jews probably had seeds in this, this attitude. I, I mean, a, a, a Jews can't truly assimilate into a culture. Even if they think they have, there's this this long-standing problem. Uh, the, the, the apartness of the Jewish community, and if they had didn't have that, they would not have continued to exist as a unique culture either. So, but it it's also has to do with the curses of the law. Uh, see, the, the Christians, the Jewish Christians disappeared. There was a sort of a, a Nazarene sect that, uphold, that sought to uphold the law. But a Christian, a Judaism among Christians, the identity of Christian and Jew, Gentile and Jew within the church quickly disappeared. Because it was not part. It's not part of Christianity. It's just like racial identity in Islam is not really part of Islam. That's why you have, say, the, 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 the black Muslim movement in America is because, because of that. Islam does not have a, is not a, um, formally an ethnic religion, whereas Judaism has a strong ethnic com component, even though you can become a Jew and not be a, a Jew by birth, but you're still regarded as somewhat not quite. <laughs> you're Jewish, but not quite Jewish. You know, you have the religion, 
and maybe you have lots of zeal, but you're still not quite one of us kind of thing. At least for a couple of generations. Uh, it, and the, the point I'm, I'm making there is this, this, this kind of identity politics, ethnic identity politics and nationality and everything else continues in various forms. And it's, uh, the, the label Nazi is probably uh, a pejorative that might distract from the issue. But the fact is, what's going on in the United States today with the woke identity culture, the racist, racist identity culture, the promotion of racial identity and group identity that's commonly called woke, intersectionality. These things, the oppressed group versus the oppressors, this is identical in all underlying forms. Not superficially identical, but structurally identical to the grievance culture, the oppressed, the oppressor. Oh, we are the oppressed people. Not impressed, oppressed individuals, we are pre and, the, and the, the characterization of groups as the enemy and groups as the oppressed. This is identity, what happened to the Nazis and what's going on in America today and what's go going on in Israel with the Palestinians and the Israelis even though that you know you can't say this is true about every person there that the over you know it has roots in the uh religion just like some of the hostility of the of the uh muslims uh, actually the christians could be should be the reconcilers there christianity can solve these problems real christianity see identity is not an issue for christianity at least identity in uh, racial identity, tribal identity, national identity. None of these things matter in Christianity. Our identity is Christ. doesn't matter the color of your skin. That's why a true Christian meets another true Christian, and regardless of the color of our skin, if we recognize each other in the Spirit, we have fellowship. We love each other, even though we don't know each other. We recognize we have something that transcends everything else, and that is Christ in us, God in us, and he is our identity. So you can't cancel Christians because our identity is not in this world anyway. You can take everything away from us. You can take our physical life away from us, but you can't cancel us. You can kill us. We will simply rise from the dead. And come again. Soon. But it's, it's th this thing that has become so dominant in culture, in cancel culture, in Hollywood, in government, in education, in uh, business, of identity, and the oppressed and the oppressor and existentialism, Everything is relative. There's no foundations. There's no truth except your own truth. This and what was going on in Germany, including the culture that led up to the rise of Hitler, the rootless Weimar Republic, cocaine was epidemic, sexual immorality, pornography in the media. They were the center of culture in Europe at, in the time at that time. The Germans and science. The Germans are the ones who discovered uh, atomic fission. They were the great physicists, the great scientists. They were the ones that sought to destroy the Bible with their critical theory. because I want to get God out of the way. It's sin, manifestations of sin. Just like America. 
in so many ways. The culture, American culture, has no anchor anymore. It's rootless. You, you see, in, in past years, you had the same kind of thing, and this is why the left sees, say, the, the, the far right. They can see this in the far right, going back to the Ku Klux Klan. Because the Ku Klux Klan, you know, the oppressed white Southerner minority, the victims of the Civil War, the, the victims of uh, blaming the black race for their problems, and then the, the white carpetbaggers and the Union Army uh, forcing them to pass things at bayonet point, and then finally stripping the, the Southern whites of the government power and installing black legislatures. Where they were victimized, especially in their own eyes. There was a lot of injustice. There were carpetbaggers. The North was wicked because the North was just as sinful as the South. See, humanity is equally sinful. Children of Adam. That's a common identity of unregenerate humanity. Children of Adam. If you're born again, your body is still from Adam, but you have a new creation in you too. You have to make sure you walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. The flesh is Adam. But the, the left in this country, this, this wokeism, America is so stupid. And so, we have spent our time playing video games and watching soap operas. So we can go back in time a little bit here. Watching mindlessness, being entertained into intellectual death. Not that there aren't a lot of people that have never wanted to think anyway. It's always easier not to think. Let's go out and get drunk. Kill off some brain cells. We'll be happier. You know, that kind of stuff. Let's be amused. Put in professional sports, too. Spend our lives following some sports team. Following baseball and football and basketball. Or some other useless thing. It does nothing to glorify God at all. At least if you go fishing or something, you might be struck by the awe of God, in awe of God's creation. But maybe not. See, all these things. You know, just, what's your relationship with God? That's the question. That's your destiny. Your destiny is determined by your relationship with God. Just like truth is determined by your relationship with God. That's what's important. That's what life is all about. Will you come to know God or not? Will you be saved and become reconciled to God or not? But America has swallowed Nazism hook, line, and sinker without the ability to see that it's Nazism. It's racial identity. It is turning. You are the oppressed and the others are the oppressor. Look for an oppressor. See, in the South, the Ku Klux Klan, the Africans, and the Catholics, they're the oppressors. They're the danger. We're the minority. Our rights have been trampled on. We have been, our property has been stolen. We have been stripped of our constitution. We're under the dominion of the tyrants in Washington. A lot of this is true, but not uniquely true. And it's, it's not you, when you identify yourself as a group, you're already outside of God because God does not do that. He judges people individually. He saves people individually. Human beings only exist as individuals. Societies, ethnicities are 
in some cases, social constructs, indeed. Not the creation of God. And they exist really only in our minds. Like America is a social construct. It's not a physical reality. It was here before America existed. You know, the America, the society, the borders, the laws, the fences, all this stuff is is something human beings have imposed, and we think of it as a objective reality, the thing itself. But without the people, the thing is nothing. It, it evaporates. A, a group without the individuals that make up the group is not a group anymore. Society without people is nothing. Doesn't exist. A nation without people doesn't exist. The whole point is, is that this, these are... Uh, composite things that are dependent on the individuals. The foundation is the individual. And the rest is what these individuals collectively and over a period of time do. Create this thing and these traditions and these laws. But they depend on the existence of the individuals. And individuals are responsible. Groups are responsible. Not, because they're not human beings. America is not a human being. Corporations are not human beings. They are not moral human beings made in the image of God, and they have no rights at all. Human rights are not a thing that exists. It's the invention of godless men. John Locke and others rejected Christianity, rejected the scriptures. People are moral beings that are were created to be the image of God. Adam was created to be the image of God. But we're a, a, a member of a fallen race. All the children of Adam come into this world fallen, separated from God. Not having God as our center, but ourself as our center, which I would say is the root of sin. The fact that God is not in us, which is why we must be born again, to restore us to, to a proper relationship with God. But human beings, as sinners, act in their own self-interest to accomplish their own will, not for the good of others, although they may dress it up in that language, especially when you're trying to convince others to do your will. Hitler was able to embody the pain and the anger and the resentment and the hate of Germany. And used that and turned it against people like the Jews and the Slavs. Let's not re forget that the Russians, millions of Russians and Russian POWs were murdered by Hitler also. And others, the gypsies. And others, uh, some Jehovah's Witnesses. Anybody that that didn't buy into it or was a member of a target, you know, a uh, a group that could be blamed for the oppression, the self-amplified oppression, the the consciousness of the oppression of the Aryan and uh, German people. And it's exactly what we're seeing today in the racial consciousness, the woke movement, the intersectionality that fills our universities, our businesses, and our government, and down into the grade schools. It's everywhere. Fills social media, and they act just like Nazis. They cancel those they view as oppressors or view those that don't accept they're racist ideology. And it is racist. 
not, well, actually, it's not even racist because it's not even ethnicity. It's, it's just simply the color of your skin, which is not a terribly good in, uh, indication of your heritage. The scripture t says this, you shall not punish the son for the sins of his father or the father for the sins of the son. God is no respecter of persons. But all these things are intrinsically godless. And we see it in the church. You can know that the people that are promoting this are either incredibly ignorant, biblically, are not born again, or they are racist, too. They buy into it. It's interesting how the Southern Baptists well, we see we see this in Germany too, with uh, especially the phenomena of the Germans in, inviting all the the Muslim uh, refugees into their country. It's like this is like a death wish. They're trying to atone for the sins of Germany, past sins by by extinguishing their own existence. No, that's not a that's not an answer for your sin. You cannot atone for your own sin. Christ did that. Only he could do that. But the same ideology, the same ideology that, that, that motivated and motivates whatever, if there's any of it left, I'm sure it's isolated pockets here and there, the Ku Klux Klan and the neo-Nazis, the skinheads, also motivates the, the, the wokeism that has so infected not only society, but the church, or what calls itself the church. It's insane. And it's Nazism, racial identity, victimhood, grievance culture. God will not have it. And he will judge those that promote it. It is no gospel. It is no answer. It never produces reconciliation between peoples or with God. In order for people to be reconciled together, first of all, they must be reconciled with God through Christ. Only then do they have the capacity to be less or more, I should say, than self-interested sinners. Do not participate in the woke cultural agenda. Do not participate in cancel culture. It's better to stand alone with Christ than go to hell with the multitude. If you will not stand alone, if you're not willing to take up your cross, and die on it, don't call yourself a Christian. It's not being consistent.